American tourist could not overcome the grief from loss of his parents and committed a suicide, leaving all his money to me. <laughs> However, unbeknownst to me, there was a research going in New Zealand that ultimately became my downfall. <laughs> the research looks at development of artificial models using computer simulation to look at cranial backspatter. So what is cranial backspatter? When you see movies and stuff, you see a massive amount of bloodshot um, spattering in direction of the bullet away from the shooter. However, it is not a common knowledge that there is a small amount of spatter spattered back towards the shooter. The reverse directionality gives its name back spatter. Back spatter is an important piece of forensic evidence because of the information that it can provide to the crime scene investigators. It can inform fire-related factors and biological factors. The fire-related factors that affect backspatter are caliber of the bullet, type of firearm, 
and the proximity of the shot. The biological <coughs> factors include the location of the shot. So how does this factor into crime solving? Well, if no bullets were found from the crime scene, or multiple bullets were found, you would like to know which one did the damage. Was this handgun found on the crime scene? Did the crime, or was it the shotgun? Was it a suicide, point blank range, or shot from one meter away by maybe somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> and if the body is absent from the crime scene, was it shot on the limbs, or was it shot on the head, or in the body, um, in the liver, losing a lot of blood? Anyway, to investigate facts better, first, you had to create a computational model of a live person based on MRI. The MRI model was composed of three main parts, which represent the three main layers of human head, the brain, the skull, and the skull. This general model, once created, can be rapidly prototyped and personalized to fit the geometry of the victim's head. This personalization is very important because no two heads are the same. If you have a bigger head, you might suffer from bigger pecs better. <laughs> so, um, so once the model was established, the information collected from the crime scene was fed into a simulation to create the spatter. This computer simulation has unprecedented advantage over the conventional animal models or mannequins. This does not suffer from ethical issues that is a problem for animal models. <laughs> <laughs> or it is very cost effective. Um, every time you shoot a mannequin, you might have to pay for it, but this, as long as you have a computer to run, it's free. Also, it has very fast turnout time and accuracy in both simulating, conducting the experiment, and analysis. So, when the spatters were simulated, the spattered particles were calculated for its approximate trajectory, bearing in mind the air drag, blood viscosity, and the gravitational effect. <laughs> The final trajectory calculated was then fed into the crime scene scan to create the final spatter. Based on that final spatter, it was confirmed that the bullet found in the crime scene, 9 millimeter, was indeed the culprit. The gun found in the head of the victim did the crime, was looking good for me. <laughs> However, <laughs> I did not expect the proximity of the shot to turn out to be one meter, proving that there was a second person. Um, the anatomical location of the shot next, was undoubtedly the head because the body was there, but that one meter really did not do the work for me, which led to the arrest of the main suspect, which will lead to a positive conviction in the court of law. solving that my research can bring to you. Thank you.
how much the ethical issues are the most the development of this technology or what's well, first of all, regardless of the ethical problem, pigs don't really have an exact geometry that matches human head. However, in order to do any simulation or any modeling work, you need a validation data that's similar to human, and the pigs were actually chosen for that purpose. That is actually part of our group work, and it wasn't a really a good time getting that kind of publicity. Um, that past university ethics board it was very humanely done. It was done in 2009. I really don't understand why all the fuss is getting up now. And we don't plan any more animal experimentation because we're going to get maximize all the data that we've acquired back then to create something like this. So hopefully, um, because of the pigs happened, this can happen to cut down the loss of future pig lives. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I must say that's very innovative. Is, is, is nobody else looking at this, um, this type of um, uh, modeling? So I don't know how much of a background I have to go back, but um, conventional finite element analysis does not handle fragmentation gracefully. And ballistic impact is of very high speed and high energy, which means the computational mathematical framework doesn't really handle things. And it's now like, only now it became available that the supercomputer cluster can perform these calculations. That's accurate enough for us. These things are um, take about 200 gigabyte RAM and a few terabytes of data space and weeks and even months of computer time. Yeah. I just wonder, thank you. Um, how, how do you describe your methodology or how do, you, how do you collect the data and how do you put it together and go, ah, like, this is how I see it. Yes. Um, so I actually make the physical models, the man say mannequins, and I ship them, <laughs> and then collect high speed data. And based on the high speed data I collected, the frames, each frame showing like how the deformation of the surface is happening, I try to mimic that as close as possible. And so that's pretty much my methodology. Yes. Would you aim for, would be for this to be rolled out to law enforcement agencies? Um, so this um, research is backed by ESR, which is our crime lab of New Zealand. Right. So hopefully it will be of a little help. And are very keen on the, this idea? Yes. Um, at the moment, ESR is being consulted about the backspatter evidence from our neighbour, the Australian court. Mm -hmm. So with more scientific um, research done, this will have more magnitude in court. That is the grand vision. This is like um, about 10th year into this group research and we're hoping that like one day you scan the crime scene with some kind of a ghost buster setup <laughs> and then scan the um, spatter pattern and feed it into an analyzer and it says like, oh, well it was probably done this much range and with this bullet, maybe potentially one of these pistols. So something magical like that might happen in the future. <laughs> Anything else? Has it been tested in any real life? Um, well, I put the 2018 as a preliminary date for the video. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully, I'm strongly hoping for um, a real world application. Was it quite, quite straightforward to translate the data from mannequins into the computer model? I was wondering what some of the main challenges were in that conversion. Um, no, because you have to get around the basics of the framework. If the mathematical modeling cannot handle the deformation and stuff, you have to program your own material card. And not many people have the biological material card suitable for brain and bone and stuff. And everybody has different material property for their own biological tissue. So that is a challenge to personalize things in a fast enough setup, but at the moment we're just still struggling to get the basic backbone of the um, software up and running and then worry about the little tweaking. I have a few questions. Um, sure. Firstly, you mentioned that you, <laughs> you make your own mannequins to use them for the simulation. So uh, is that in the software or did you actually have to make, physically oh. make 
Yeah. What so I spent a few weeks in the lab pouring down um, stuff and try to demold stuff. Um, it's made using a composite material um, using cast on technique. Mm -hmm. So I cast polyurethane bone with a silicon skin um, and gelatin brain, which is a conventional stimulant materials used in a ballistic testing around the world. We shoot them twice a year, a kind of frequency. <laughs> <laughs> All of my heads are named. <laughs> yes. My other question was, um, you were saying that uh, it does take a lot of computational power to actually get this data, so potentially if you were actually um, looking to work for the crime scene and be kind of looking at a few weeks of actually getting your data back, would there be um, potential to use something like something like render farms or anything to actually speed up this process? Um, ultimately, I'm hoping to get a lookup table. So unless you're very austere for us, this old male that's out of the data table, right. you can quickly look up reasonable data in the table and zone in on the stuff. And then if a further analysis is required, then you can request for a special case of simulation. Right. Yeah. But we can definitely look into rapid prototyping as well. Thank you. Yes. Um, so the heads. Yeah. Are the heads sort of, how do you put it? Um, they got the texture, the feel, and, and uh, the um, thing of the human skull. Yeah. Oh, yes. Especially under ballistic impact, they behave very similarly to human heads. So we actually shot um, some animal heads as well, like as mentioned before, to match the ballistic data. Yeah. So um, it does look and feel quite similar and comparable in weight as well to actual human head. So, so do you shoot the heads from different angles? At the moment, the location of impact is the right temple um. because uh, most of the Court cases are based on discerning suicide from homicide, whether it was it staged suicide or a genuine suicide. So that's like most popular suicide yeah. <laughs> location. If you need to know that, you probably don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the 70s, I well, good down the South Island for a company. And in the evening, there was this high, wide anything fence. And some of the employees would climb it and steal all the, the gloves. So the, one day the company got the gloves. They um, did something that no one knew. So apparently someone climbed up, up this side of this fence and stole uh, a packet of gloves and in the morning we were told they know who the culprit was because what he didn't know was they separated the left hand gloves from the right hand gloves they put the left hand gloves here and the right hand gloves way over there and they were thought they were getting a matching pair so they're looking for a one handed person so do you have something like that? I think um, this is like going to be published. So if um, the criminals care to read International Journal of Legal Medicine, they might be informed, unfortunately. Yeah. Any more questions? I think my time's up. Okay, thank you very much.